Namaste. Welcome. Our vital tissues, when properly stored at the slightly elevated levels in our system, transmute into various sounds, or nada. And the sound becomes more refined, quieter, gentler, but penetrating as we become more efficient managing our energy flow. And listening to nada during meditation could absorb the mind. Yes, I could attest to this. I attained my first samadhi listening to nada. It's really a powerful element. All right. In the body, the vital tissue is abundantly contained in you know, the reproductive system and the brain. All right. In males, it's the ojas. Ojas is the vital tissue present in our semen, our reproductive fluid, and the soma in the brain. All right. But it is so abundantly contained in the semen. All right. Therefore, yeah, the moderation, the pres preservation of our reproductive fluid is essential, especially during the first few years of the practice. Okay. In females, it's contained in the ovum or the egg cell. But for the females, you are more efficient preserving this because the ovum or your reproductive cell doesn't come out of the body until extreme or uh, orgasm or during childbirth. Yeah, so you are more efficient preserving this vital force. But in males, since the process of ejaculation yeah, inevitably yeah, uh, releases the seminal fluid, therefore, yeah, so excessive yeah, ejaculation could hurt your spiritual practice. All right, so in Hatha Yoga, before controlling this, yeah, before controlling the mind and the autonomic functions, yeah, we need to learn how to solve the practical issues first because all of this yeah, prepares you for a higher observance of controlling the mind. All right. In Hatha Yoga, we start with the body first. The body is the best starting place. Because this is the 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 easiest to you know, discipline, so to speak. All right. And what are these observances? Before the practice, definitely you have to do some internal preparatory cleansing, the shakarmas. Yeah, the shakarmas pave way for the cleansing of the inner organs, yeah, as well as for you to feel the subtleness of your inner body. That's one. Then asana. Yeah. Asana is the posture. So when we practice the asana, we preserve the reproductive energy because we allot you know, or we channelize that energy to our bodies. Yeah, so we promote our uh, strength, physical strength, flexibility, mobility, dynamism. So we become less attached to yeah, releasing or depleting this vital force. Yeah. Next, pranayama. Pranayama is the most potent in preserving as well as replenishing our bodily energies. Yeah, right. so, but pranayama could be a double-edged sword because it can yeah, leave your body restless if you overstimulate your sympathetic nervous system. Yeah, therefore, yeah, the teacher. Yeah, the teacher is really very important because the teacher has been through in and out of the process many times and has come back many times. So we're able to give you the progressive steps. Yeah. Pranayama is the most potent, but yeah, you need to approach this and learn this properly. All right. Next, mudras. Now, mudras are ways for us to channelize our energy using still bodily gestures yeah, and some internal adjustment, internal techniques of using the optic nerves and the mouth and the tongue, yeah, the nabukri, the nabu mudra, or the kachari mudra, and some gestures of the hands as well. Because the hands, yeah, even their feet, they hold the most nerve endings, yeah, which we can use and uh, make use to channelize and steal the energy inside. Yeah, but of course, this will yeah, require us to uh, develop the inner system as well. So just doing the mudra without us developing the preparatory observances first, it's useless. So uh, this is like progressive steps. So learn first the, the lower observances, yeah, initial cleansing, physical body, breath, and channelize your breath. Nice. Yeah, mudras. Then after that, relaxation, shavasana.
All right, Shavasana is where we relax the brain and then drain the excess energy out through relaxation. And Shavasana is good for us to balance the, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. So the mind yeah, remains steady. The mind remains calm, neither restless or lazy. Yeah, not overly active or yeah, less active. So you remain right in the middle. And this is so important because through opening and allowing the sides, the polarities to go and then balance and meet in the midline, that's where the Shishumna opens up. The Shishumna is actually the pathway inside where you know, this vital life force flow in and up from the brain to the body and from the body to the brain. All right. And the techniques of Atta Yoga are so powerful in um, developing this uh, awareness, internal awareness. All right, so Atta Yoga, yeah, prepare your body. Develop your body, develop the breath, channelize the energy, yeah, and preserve and still the energy. All right, now, when you are able now to become like familiar with the process going in and out of that yeah, circular process, then the brain yeah, will just surrender. What's the use of controlling this if the body is not ready? Yeah. Otherwise, it will just create conflict. And then controlling the bodily functions, especially the sexual function, could be quite tricky. Yeah. Because controlling the mind without understanding the relationship of the body to the mind, to the spiritual practice, yeah, could leave you not just physically imbalanced or heavy, but mentally and spiritually heavy as well. This could lead to guilt, remorse, depression, yeah? Because as we uh, control the mind, uh, and there's no, uh, I say, agreement between the body, what the body feels and the mind would like to do, yes, so they fight. Yeah, and then this could cause mental yeah, issues. Yes, it, this could lead to psychosis because controlling the mind, controlling the energy without you opening the body, yeah, could create high electrical current flowing through your nervous system, and that can yeah what yeah damage your brain. So it's really important to approach this yeah progressively, step by step, step by step. All right, of the mat observances include what. Chanting, but chanting could be part of your practice, but I would consider it as my spiritual separate practice. Now, chanting, praying, yeah, singing, reading scriptures, or listening to recitations. Yeah. Songs of praise is the highest form of communication with God. Chanting to our voice, our tongue, yeah, is a powerful tool for us to unite with the source, all right? Reading yeah, gives you inspiration, especially the scriptural scriptures. It gives you this sense of clarity, uh, content, yeah, and uh, peace, yeah. What else? Um, other of the matter of services, take care of your health. Definitely, you need to have a healthy, regular checkup, yeah, with your medical practitioner, so your are confident, you are um, make sure that there's no physical issues because when we're healthy, yeah, definitely we worry less. And when we worry less, we're happy. So we allow more energy for others. And speaking of others, for me, one of the most beneficial in healing is teaching. Yeah. Because when I teach, um, even before I teach, my energy is devoted to not writing my lessons, making tutorials such as this, and interacting with my students before and after the class. And that yeah, allows me yeah, to bring the energy and to, to channelize it yeah, to something which is less physical, something which is more of a uh, service, yeah, I say practice. Okay, now what else? Um, be one with nature. Yeah. Um, allow your eyes to appreciate the colors of nature so good for relaxing the mind because you need to slow down yeah 
the the mental energy the restlessness so when the uh, the brain is relaxed yeah when the brain is balanced then we become less yeah attached to the physical energy all right what else of course yeah moderation yeah you don't want to be stopping yeah your sexual activity yeah so just suddenly yeah so if yeah the need for it is because of love compassion sanctity of life yeah procreation responsible procreation then go for it yeah so sex is a part of your spiritual development because you are creating you know, creating life yeah so this this journey yeah becomes like a cycle for the next yeah, generations to enjoy all right so yes that's that's my 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 belief yeah love compassion respect sanctity yeah if we do and uh, devote our energies uh, to those um noble and i say um spiritual yeah functions and uh, aspirations then yeah using this uh vital force is good yes and of course yeah my advice is to listen to your teacher yeah seek guidance if the thought of um this journey yeah crosses your mind yeah because only a practical teacher will be able to lead you there yeah and bless the teachers for sharing your lessons your teachings your experiences really you're doing this world a huge favor i'll see you next time and thank you as always and have a lovely day master